Postman is the most used API development tool in the world today. And in July, Postman released a VS Code extension of its tool. So this means if you go to the Visual Studio Marketplace, you can download and install this extension today. Now, before this release, there were already two pretty popular API client tools for VS Code. Now, one is Thunder Client with over 2.6 million downloads, and the other one is REST Client with over 3.7 million downloads. So within this video, I'm going to explore what this new Visual Studio Code extension actually does and if it's any good. We're then going to compare it to its competitors to answer the question, what is the best API testing client in Visual Studio Code today? This is going to be very interesting, trust me. So we're now inside Visual Studio Code. I'm going to start off by looking at what this new extension offers. Now, in order to get going with the extension, go over to the Marketplace Explorer and then do a search for Postman. Now, the object or extension you want to install is called Postman and it's been created by the team, which is also called Postman. Now, after you install this extension, what you'll notice is that within your Solution Explorer, you're going to have this icon. And if you don't see it, right click on your bar and just enable this option here that says Postman. Now, clicking on this icon, you're going to be presented with this option to either sign in using your Postman account or to create a brand new account. Clicking on sign in is basically going to prompt you to log into Postman in a browser. So I'll do that by clicking on the open button here. Now, as I was trying to log in, I did encounter a pretty severe error and basically my Postman extension didn't load and I got some sort of warning about a view error. Now, in order to fix this, I actually had to go into my file system, delete my Visual Studio Code cache, then reinstall the extension and then it worked. Now, I don't want to knock the Postman team at all because this extension is still in beta. However, if you do have installation issues, then you're going to have to delete some files from your file system. And the instructions on how to do that can be found in the related tutorial that I've created. And the link for that is below. Now, assume you didn't have the same sign in issues as I did. After you log in, you're going to see this screen. Now, at the top, straight away, you can see that we can organize all of our different requests into workspaces. So potentially, if you're working on different teams, different projects, then this will be really useful. Now, the main use for Postman is going to be making some sort of request. And we can do this on the big new HTTP request button. Now, I think that the thing which is really nifty with Postman is that as well as just HTTP, you can see that it also supports WebSockets and it also supports gRPC. And you can also import stuff using curl. So when we click on new request here, you can see that we're going to get a screen which looks very similar to classic Postman. So at the top, you can set the request type. So we've got all the classics of, you know, get, post, all the REST API stuff. And I really like that this is actually color coordinated. Now, aside from just making requests, we can also add additional data to that request. So we've got some classics, so we can add in query string params. We can also do things like authorization. So if you need to authenticate a request, we can add a bearer token or an access token if we need to. We've also got the ability to add and view HTTP headers. So clicking on this little button here, you can see all the hidden ones. Then we've got the ability to attach data to the body. So we can attach form data. We can attach raw data like a JSON request. We can also do GraphQL if we want to. And finally, we also have the ability to run pre and post scripts. So these will be run every single time that you send a new request. Now, after you're happy with your response, you can send it off and then you can inspect the response below. So you can see the body, the cookies and the headers and any test results that you might have run. So just in terms of making requests, Postman is a solid tool and it's going to have everything you need in order to test your APIs correctly. Jumping back into VS Code, let's look at some remaining capabilities this extension offers. Now, another real important key one for me is the ability to create different environments and variables. So clicking on this plus button here, you can see I can create a brand new environment. So let's say this is production. And then within an environment, I can create different variables. Now environments are really useful because let's say that you have a staging, production and test environment and you have different access tokens shared between them. Being able to set up environments and having specific variables will make it much easier when you need to make requests. So now I've got my production environment. Let's say that I go back to my request. 
I open it up, click on this one, and then in the top here, you can see that we've got the ability to set my environment, and this is gonna pull in those variables. Now, the next capability, which I think is really useful, is the history tab. So clicking on history, you can see all the previous requests I've made, double click on this, and you can see I can launch a previous request, click send, off we go. And this saves me so much time because I always forget where I save things. However, I can typically remember when I've used them last. So now is probably a good time to compare what we get in VS Code to the desktop version. So I've logged into the PC version. I think one thing I'd say is that you know at the top, the desktop version is definitely designed exactly for your API request. So you have very specific menu items which are related to API exploring. So you can see here that you know we can explore extensions, plugins, all that kind of good stuff. Now, just in terms of simple comparisons, you can see that in the left-hand column, we can still manage workspaces, so we can create new ones or import existing collections. Now, after I've signed in, I'm gonna have access to all my requests I've saved against my account. And you can see in the right-hand side here that my request builder looks exactly the same. So I get access to all the different verbs and the REST API calls. You can see that I can still add things like query string params, authorization, headers, the pre-request and post-request scripts. Now, one thing I did struggle a little bit was actually how do we create our web sockets? Because clicking on the plus button here actually defaults to creating a web API request. So I actually found Visual Studio Code extension a little bit easier here. Now, for me personally, I was pretty impressed with the VS Code extension in this comparison. Now, yes, the desktop version is more tailored to API building. However, not having to jump out of VS Code, go to the desktop version of Postman is also really useful. So now that we've established that the Postman VS Code extension is on par with its desktop equivalent, let's compare it to some of its competitors. I want to start off comparing it to the most popular REST client for Visual Studio Code, which is REST client, downloaded nearly 4 million times. Now, this is a bit of a weird extension. I don't personally like it too much. I don't really understand why it's been used so much. Now, with REST clients, you don't get a UI. You don't get a nice tab. Basically, you can create a new file like I've got here, which is example.http. So basically, the way that this extension works, if I paste in an API request inside an HTTP file, you can see I get this little button which says send request. Clicking on it is then going to give me the response of this request in text string format. So, eh. now let's say you don't want to create a file with an HTTP extension. It is possible just to post your API endpoint into any old file. And then if we go to the command palette, do a rest client send request, you can see that we can launch it anywhere. Now, personally, I've always found rest client a bit limiting and I've always used the desktop version of Postman instead. However, recently I have been using the second most popular rest client for Visual Studio and that is Thunder Client. So let's see how these two compare because it's actually a lot closer. To get going with Thunder Client, again, head over to the extension manager and do a search for Thunder space client. And it's this jobby here by Ranga Vadahini. Now, the good news is that after you install Thunder Client, you do get a UI. So you'll find this icon within the Solution Explorer. Clicking on that, you can see that we get our request builder. Now, Thunder Client isn't going to force you to log in at the beginning. However, you can create an account with Thunder Client if you want to, so you can save your collections. Now, when it comes to requests, you see we've got the big request button here. This screen looks very similar to Postman where we can put in our different request types, put in our API URL, and then we can define headers, query strings, auths, bodies. We can run post tests and pre-run scripts, all that kind of good stuff. Now, as well as creating individual requests, we can add them into collections. We also have the ability to create environments. So very similar to Postman here. Now, just in terms of the UI, I personally found Postman the winner. Now, I definitely found things like creating an environment to be a little bit slicker than Postman. I also found it a little bit easier to attach environment variables onto a quest in Postman. Now, in terms of functionality, I'd also say that Postman wins because as well as just doing the typical REST API stuff, we can also do WebSockets and a gRPC. We can also do that importing of curl stuff as well. So hands down the winner there. Now, the final thing where it is a little bit more kind of closer is actually around pricing. 
Now, for both tools, they are free if you're an individual. However, there is a price if you're using it at a team level or in a company. So for this video, I've been using the individual license, which means I didn't have to pay anything. However, if you want to use Postman and Team, you can see here that for the basic tier, it's going to cost you 12 bucks per month, and that is per user. And then that can go up to 29 bucks per month for the professional. And then we've got Enterprise. And I'll let you check this page out to see all the details. Now, if we compare this to Thunder Client, you can see that, yep, we also have a free edition. However, they also have a startup cost, which is three bucks per month. And the business tier is seven bucks per month per user. And the enterprise is only 16 bucks per month per user. Now, you do get more features when it comes to Postman. However, Thunder Client is definitely a little bit cheaper. So with that all said and done, in my personal opinion, the best API client for Visual Studio Code is, yeah, it's, it's Postman. It's probably obvious it's Postman. Postman, even though it's in beta, has the most amount of features. It syncs with the desktop client and it's free. It's pretty hard to fault if I'm honest. Now we're getting to that stage in the video where if you haven't already, don't forget to click on subscribe and click on like if you found value from this video. Now I release a video every single Sunday aimed at making you a better developer. So what's not to love? Now, if you are interested in learning more about Visual Studio, then before you leave, I've created a video all about the best extensions possible that you can install for Visual Studio Code, the link to which is on the screen right now. So check that out if you want to. It's a banger. Otherwise, hope you're having a great day and happy coding.